Asma, it's great to meet you. What are you doing here in this lab? I use 3D printing to formulate um, drug eluting uh, medical devices and I specifically look into medical devices for women's health. For example, um, intrauterine devices, so for contraception, the ones that are loaded with hormones. So here I have two types of technologies for 3D printing. The first one which is fused deposition modeling. So that's where we use a polymer and then we, we create that uh, object with. So you're 3D printing a contraceptive? Yes, so still in the experimental um, stage. Uh, there have been some work published by a number of groups using this technology, which is the FDM one, trying to load it with a number of uh, um, drugs, hormones or um, model drugs. Look into is to compare this one to the other type of technology of 3D printing, where we have uh, resin, uh, which is a, a monomer, so the components of the polymer, and then we make a polymer by water curing it, so solidifying it using light. And that way, the, the advantage of that technology over this one is that it's because it's a, a liquid, you can easily incorporate the drug the way you want. So you don't have a, to have a step beforehand to, to incorporate the drug. Everything is in one step. Now, I have to admit, I've seen many 3D printers in my lifetime. <laughs> I've never seen one that 3D prints drugs and I've never seen a 3D printer that doesn't use some sort of powder or resin but instead uses liquid. So the traditional coil uses copper. Correct. And it's the copper that does the work of the contraceptive. In, indeed, yes. So you're not printing with copper, are you? No, no, no. So we're working with a, with a polymer. So the, the other type, which is commercially available, where they have um, a hormone in, incorporated into the device itself and then it releases. The advantage of using 3D printing is that you can customise it. You're not restricted to a, a certain size. And then also we can change the composition. There are ways of how we can incorporate a number of things separately so you don't have to worry about them interacting while you're making them. Also, we're looking into trying to tailor the release, so how the drug comes out of the device, um, and see how would that be possible to, to improve the, the clinical outcome. But we're still at the stage of, uh, of the development. It all sounds like bespoke. Indeed, because what you want is, you want to personalise it, meaning that it's for the specific person, and you want to customise it so you can have whatever you want for that particular person. It gives us a lot of uh, ways to helpfully uh, customise it. So personalising in the form of drugs that it delivers. Yes. Personalising in the size. Correct. And scale of it. And the design. And design. Yes, yeah, so whatever you want it. The type of material. So you're not restricted to one type of material. So you can, you can play around and have different things depending on what you want it to be. So, and how long you want it to be. Is it something that's be inserted, for example, and then removed, or something to be biodegradable, and then it's inserted and then left for the body to um, then to dispose of. Oh my gosh! Way. So many options and all so smart. I know, it's and all in fifteen minutes. Exactly. So it's just a, a simple technique. It's the way that you use it, and and the the design and the material is where the selection of the material. That's where the um, kind of the work goes into and the research goes into. The University of Greenwich is an amazing place for innovation and really driving technology forward. What would you say are the key objectives of your research and what makes your work so novel? The, the novelty comes in in the application. The University of Greenwich is, has the, is the best place to do it because you have really, really good facilities as well as you have a number of people with different areas of expertise so I can really um, discuss, uh, collaborate and learn from other people as well. So that's what the um, best thing about it. Asma, I'm so excited to tell you that I think the 3D print is ready. Yes, it is. So what happens next? We just need to remove it off the plate. So what you have here is the object and on top of the support and then you can see it that way. So that wouldn't be to scale. Standard plastic, no drugs in this. <laughs> but what is so novel about the research happening at Greenwich is the fact that drugs can be embedded into this and slowly released. And that's part of your work, Asma. Yes. To design that in the exactly. best possible way. Yes, exactly. Yeah. What's the other kind of prototype you could print? I'm also working on micro needles. I'll show you how to, to make them. You can make a patch 
with their tiny needles. Oh, wow. They're too small to, to cause any, any pain. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so drugs would be embedded? Exactly, exactly. So what I don't kind of uh, try to show here is with the color. So if you have one with no drugs, it is uh, completely plain. And then you have, you can incorporate different materials as colors, for example. So tell me, why do you need to 3D print with a liquid? It allows for that ability to customize the concentrations, how much drug you have in, and the different um, properties of different drugs. So they can exist in, in this liquid form and you can just build it in the object. I want to watch it because I have never seen a 3D printer that works with liquid. And it's so fascinating because it's a liquid that mixes the drug and the resin. Indeed. How does it make it solid? So um, the liquid comes from a, a resin, which is a monomer, which is the, the, the building block of a polymer. So polymers are repeated, um, uh, connected monomers in a way, in a chemical reaction. So what we're doing is basically a, a, a sort of um, curing a chemical reaction for these uh, monomers to, to stick together and to make a larger, larger size of a molecule. And what you mean by photo is you're using light Correct. As the, the bonding agent. In, indeed. These are similar to when you go to the uh, nail salon and you want to do your nails and you get the gel type where you have it under the UV light. It's basically the same principle where you exposing the light is, um, is is what accelerate what causes the reaction to happen what's fascinating about your research is that it's engineering Pretty so much, you yeah. you have to determine the physicalities True. of what you're printing and yes. every engineer loves a 3d printer but the minute you incorporate drugs into it correct everything changes my area is in broadly called pharmaceutics and that's where we convert a drug into a medicine so it's like if it's a tablet that's a medicine what well, the active ingredient inside maybe paracetamol that's a drug so we try to find ways of how we design our medicine to be able to achieve what we want it to achieve and there are a number of factors that can affect it one of it is um, who is taking the drug others is how the drug behaves in the body as well as how the drug behaves when we formulate it and the drug is a, is, a, is a prominent factor of those. But we think as well of, of, the, of the process and the parameters of affecting the process as well. It's almost like a mix between engineering and, and pharmacy. It's a fascinating area.